Hello everybody, it's TK and Earl and we have been living in an RV full-time for over a month now. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and we just finally closed on the house this week. So we're official. Yeah. And we it's wanted to, yeah, it's pretty <laughs> cool. We wanted to share our initial, some initial thoughts as well as answers some of the questions that you've asked us in our previous videos and on our Facebook page. So we'd like to start with just what has been the most surprising for us and for this first part we're each going to give our answer yeah so what was most surprising for me was how much stuff that i had and had to get rid of in order to fully move into the rv and i still have a lot of stuff that i could probably get rid of so that's been probably most surprising so far and most surprising for me has been just how natural this all feels like it feels completely normal to be living in here full time it feels much more comfortable than actually the house felt for me and also um just how clean we've been able to keep things i mean it's not perfectly clean we've got pets we have blankets lying around for them and the dishes do pile up but we actually have gotten pretty good about the dishes because we have to otherwise it's a, you, there's no space to move <laughs> next question what is the best part of living in the RV so far? I think the best part for me is that we're getting to travel around, experience new things, checking out new cities, going to different parks, and checking out historical places. That's been really cool so far. I think I really like that. And so I don't forget, <laughs> make sure you check out our videos on our travel adventures. We also go into our date nights if we go to a restaurant or somewhere else fun. So make sure you check those out. My favorite part is also that, and I've been looking through some of my old papers and stuff and realized that I'm actually living a dream that I never thought was possible, which is traveling every month and twice a month. Yeah. And maybe even someday we'll get to be um, every week traveling, um, but it's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. What do we miss most about living in the house? I think probably now that we're being out on the road that knowing where i'm going around the area and knowing you know where we're located because i'm out on the road a lot and you know relying on google maps and it can work pretty well but you know sometimes she'll say to take a right and there'll be two really close rights and you may take the wrong one and sometimes turn down the wrong path and get a little bit lost so I guess just knowing where I was going back then. He does a lot of driving. <laughs> so for me, as I suspected before we started this adventure, I miss the showers. But the showers are still pretty hot here and we can have a longer shower, particularly if we have full hookups. We don't usually leave the sewer connected because we're figuring out how we want to dump tanks and things correctly. Um, so we could have longer showers and they are hot, but the water pressure is not fantastic, so I don't know if that's something we want to check into in the future. Okay. Next question, what is our biggest challenge so far? The biggest challenge for me, I would say setting up and tearing down. It can be a little, little stressful, you know, making sure that you do everything correctly and in the right order. And since I do the towing of the <laughs> RV, making sure that everything's hooked up correctly and you know pulling away from the site and you know not going to ruin our house. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's definitely been more of a concern for Brian because he's thankfully taken that over. But I know there are gonna be times where I'm gonna be taking that over, so I have been asking him to show me more things, and we do try to split up. Some of the work, like making sure all of the counter spaces are clear. We've had a couple little hijinks with that if you've read the blog. Um, and we're, we're getting there and soon I'm gonna learn how to drive the truck. <laughs> That's my next goal. Um, and for me, uh, the biggest challenge I've been focusing on just up until now, since we just closed the house, is making sure everything's good with the house. Making sure we've updated our address, um, we still have a couple things to do with that, but just really making sure everything's wrapped up so we can close that door and continue on this adventure. 
<laughs> so for this section, we're going to be answering your questions that you either asked us in comments on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page, TK and Earl. We're going to take turns answering these for you, starting with Earl. You're asked, what do we do for laundry? Yeah, so some RV users have washer and dryers <laughs> in their RVs. There's a few. We, we unfortunately do not. There isn't enough space for it, but that's okay. The first couple times that we've done laundry, we still had the house and we were close by, so I did laundry there. Now that we're on the road, I've done laundry at a laundromat, and that wasn't too bad. You know, you do you know, toss in the quarters and do the laundry there was interesting because I did experience a little bit of a fight. People were arguing over their clothes being done and if the, they were done with the washer. So that was interesting, but that's what we've been doing so far. And some sites do have laundry uh, available. The last site we did, we were at had laundry, but it wasn't available because the coronavirus has things shut down. Hi, Alea, she's making ears <laughs> down there. <laughs> And the site that we're at right now, I believe has laundry as well. So we'll be checking that out. Cool. And the next question is, what is the square footage of this unit? Which we're gonna have to estimate a little bit. It is about 37 feet long. I think it's 36 feet, 10 inches. And it's eight feet wide across. Then we also have the slide outs to add on on top of that. So we estimated that it's about 350 to 400 square feet when everything's out including the slide outs and our house was 1080 so it gives you kind of an idea of what we've uh, <laughs> what we have now we've halved more than halved what we had before but it, we have everything that we need here we, and we don't need a garage we don't need a basement so yeah we condensed down very nicely Next question is, can you be inside the RV with slides pushed back in? And there's a little bit of space for you to get in. You can have access to the bathroom and there's a little bit of space next to our island that you can squeeze in and have access to a couple of drawers. So uh, you can do that and then we can get to the bedroom. So I would say, if we really needed anything, you know, the bathroom is probably something we would need on the road if we were just driving along and needed to stop. And then maybe if we just wanted to sleep somewhere that without putting a slide off, so we have access to the bedroom. But other than that, when you have the slides in, it's tight and <laughs> you can't really squeeze through at all. We haven't tried it yet, but I think supposedly you can open the right side of the fridge too. It's a oh, yeah. two door open. Yeah, I think you might be able to, yeah. The next question is about expenses for living in an RV versus when we were living in a house. And we're still figuring that out. Uh, we're still looking at the budget, with everything closing up and everything. We'll have to see what things are like when we don't have utilities, yada, yada. So um, we'll probably even do a separate video on that. But basically, we think it's going to look like it's pretty even to the expenses that we had before, except maybe a little bit more for our RV life. And I say our RV life because it's gonna be different depending on what RV you get, um, what places you stay in. Uh, we have an RV and a truck, so you know there's some expenses with like insurance having for both. So there are a lot of different factors that can go into that. For us, it's looking like it'll probably be a little bit more. Yeah, definitely where you wanna stay because you can find places to stay for free. You can boondock. There's places where you can reduce that expense, so that can bring expenses down pretty far. That can make a huge difference, as well as internet. Yeah. That's something we'll talk about a little bit. Our next two questions are more about money. The first is about RV sites and length of stay and how that affects expense. So most places, they will do a uh, discount on the weekly rate. So we'll have, you know, of course, one price for daily rate and then weekly price. And I think some places do reduce for monthly rate, right? Mm -hmm. And you can also get a membership to a website called GoodSam and places do have discounts for GoodSam members as well. 
We do have that. And we found that booking, they'll often ask for the good SAM, but then sometimes the weekly rate is just cheaper anyway, so. We just go with stay for a week, because we usually stay around two weeks. So, yeah. And the next question is about, are we concerned about depreciation of the RV and the truck versus the house, um, which normally is considered an asset? And the answer really is no. And I realize we both can address this question because we both feel passionately about it. The main thing for me is that I absolutely love this space, like this RV, like the more we're in it, the more I can't believe how perfectly it fits us. So I am so much a hundred, a thousand times happier living in this space than I live in the house, which is for me, the most important thing that I can value. And also just, the way things change value, like sometimes I'm surprised by how society works with something that's, you know, you had 10 years ago could be completely worthless or could be worth a thousand dollars, depending on what people deem to be valuable. And also just, I wanted to mention that my own house depreciated $30,000 within the time I had it. Now it went down and it went back up, but really value is so subjective and I thought you might want to add in because you get passionate about this too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm more of the mindset of, you know, wanting things that don't depreciate, um, cause that you lose out on some money. But I think the trade off here, like Terry was mentioning that, you know, we're getting to experience whole, whole new things and, you know, getting to be adventurous. I think that's a little bit of a trade-off that, that we're willing to take. And, you know, right now, you know, think about the whole coronavirus situation, how a lot of people were buying RVs. So, I mean, RVs that maybe you bought last year may not have depreciated as much because there's such a huge demand for them this year with everybody wanting to, to get RVs. So there's that aspect to take into account too. but. Yeah, I think it's definitely been a good trade-off for us so far. Yeah, I did want to mention that too. Thank you for bringing that up. But uh, RVs have been extremely in demand, so they are more actually valuable right now. Uh, of course, there is some depreciation. And same with uh, trucks, because we tow with a truck. We were looking at used trucks and considering them, but the price was so close between a used and a new one that we thought we should just go with a new one then. Yeah. Our next question is about mail. What are we doing for mail? So we set up our address at a relative's house. So all of our important mail will go there and we can just let them know to open stuff up for us if we wanted to, especially if it's important. And as far as getting things delivered, let's say either <laughs> engine breaking back there in the background. Um, Getting things delivered from, say, Amazon or from Shackley, any like packages that we really wanted to order. The last place that we stayed at, they let us ship to them and then she actually delivered it to our door. And I imagine most places would do that for you as well, especially in the world that we're living in today where people have a lot of stuff shipped from Amazon. So we'll learn more about that as we go. The next question is about internet, which we mentioned briefly, that was something that was very stressful for a little while because we didn't know how things were going to work. But so far, so good. I do have a mobile hotspot for my job. And also, we have our phones. We were using those as hotspots. We did up the plan a little bit. And then just last week, we finally got our internet in. We added Nomad as another uh, mobile hotspot that's through um, AT&T. Our main phone is through Verizon. And so far it's been really good. We've been watching some Netflix, finally. <laughs> been really excited about that and it's it's been great. The Wi-Fi at the RV parks are is not dependable, is what we've found. Sometimes it's non-existent. Yep. Sometimes it's extremely spotty. Yep. Sometimes it works for a while and then suddenly drops out of here. So. <laughs> So we finally think we've got a good solution. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, and the Nighthawk, or the, or the Nomad, is it called a Nighthawk? Nomad Nighthawk, I think it's called. Um, that's our primary internet that we're using right now. So the phones are kind of a backup just in case we don't get great service for AT&T in the area that we're in because the Nomad is unlimited and unthrottled, which is great. And the phones are unlimited, 
but throttled at a certain point. So we want to use the hotspots on them as little as possible. So that's going to be just stuff that we absolutely have to use for work purposes. I think we can get in trouble with Nomad if we go like 1,000 gigabytes, he said, which we realized, like, we kind of tried to estimate, because like, it would be really hard for us to do. Yeah, yeah, we would not be anywhere close to that, I don't think. Yeah, we'll find out this month. <laughs> Our next question is about what we do for work on the road, pretty much. And we're both going to answer this question, starting with Earl. Yeah, so I do deliveries through DoorDash and Grubhub. And whenever I get to a new location, I can just switch over, which is great. It's really ideal for people who want to travel where they can have an income. I also have my business through Shackley. So that provides me another source of income. And then I also do some stock trading. So we've got like three, four sources of income. <laughs> Same for me. Um, my main source of income right now is working for an e-commerce business as a community manager, which takes up a lot of the day, Monday through Friday. But I do also have three students through Wyzant still. They're all online at this time because that's all I can do. As well as I'm starting up uh, vision work again with Felicity Joy coming soon. Yeah. So that's what we do pretty much for our income on the road. Last question that we wanted to throw in was actually one of our questions because I think it's important is how are the pets doing on the road? And we have two cats and two dogs, if you didn't realize. We have um, Link and Zelda are our cats and we have Bowser and Leia are dogs and they're all about the same size. So that's not a really big issue in this small space, but we were concerned about how they're gonna do and I thought we could both talk about how they're doing. Why don't you start Earl? Yeah, so the dogs have adjusted pretty well and I think that they enjoy getting out and exploring new things too. You know, dogs are very, you know, smell oriented so they're getting to experience new smells and getting to hang out outside and the cats are doing pretty good too. Um, of course their world has shrunk because they had the whole house to run around in and now they have just about a third size <laughs> of what they had before but they seem to be doing pretty well so far. Yeah, I thought the dogs were gonna be barkers, but they've been pretty good. We had a little bit of an issue, but nothing that we're super concerned about. Of course, we don't know what happens when we step out for a while, yeah. but they've been good. The cats, I was worried about them throwing up all over the place. I think they've only thrown up a couple times. They had a little bit of adjustment right in the beginning, but now I think it's like a once a week hairball. Yeah, doesn't seem as, as much as it was before which is awesome <laughs> and what's great is this place has stayed pretty clean i haven't been seeing like tufts of fur or there hasn't been litter all over the floor like some people talked about in their rv videos it's actually been good it's been really pleasant yeah so that about wraps things up for this first q and a thank you for your questions if there's anything that we talked about that you'd like to hear more mm -hmm. about we could probably turn that into a full video so please let us know and uh, thank you for liking our videos. Please remember to subscribe and turn on the little bell <laughs> so you can get notified as soon as our content comes out. Be in the know. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.